I think me and David get a got off on the wrong foot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just bad luck, really, or more likely just my own ignorance. When I was first introduced to the Ibiza superstar French DJ and producer, I didn't know that he had been making hits in Europe for years. I didn't know he helped produce one of my guiltiest pleasures of all time. I was completely unaware of his previous oeuvre of work when he first started having American hits. And what was that first hit? <laughs> I'm trying to find the words to describe this song without being disrespectful. Sexy bitch is a rancid puddle of dog vomit and everyone involved is probably a child molester. If I had to make a list of the top 10 worst songs I've ever reviewed, I'd probably reserve two or three places for Sexy Bitch. A song so bad that it made America finally say, you know what, maybe this whole Akon thing was a mistake. Considering all the other terrible songs that Akon unleashed on the world without consequence, that's quite a feat. The lyrics were inane, the vocals were awful, and the production was tired and monotonous. I just hated it all around, and because of that, I initially pegged David Guetta as the Michael Bay of music, puffing out loud, insulting, offensive product devoid of substance or meaning. Hell, he even looks like Michael Bay. It's an understandable conclusion, right? But that was two years ago, and now that I have more experience with Geta, I realize that those initial impressions were way off, so I'm gonna try and be the bigger man and admit I was wrong. Understandably wrong, but still wrong, and I'll take the hit for thinking that Sexy Bitch was a fair representation of his work, because it's not. David Geta isn't awful. He's boring. He's intensely boring. I can't think of any other big name artist who makes music as mechanical or robotic, which is impressive considering how many of his peers present themselves as actual literal robots. And even worse than just writing boring music, he has an amazing ability to recruit other singers and make them boring too. From turning the vivacious, demented Nicki Minaj into an anonymous house diva, to making the very first Usher song I ever heard where I didn't even recognize him, David Guetta has perfected the ability of draining the life force of everyone he comes across. I kind of imagine him as Dr. Robotnik, taking poor defenseless artists and turning them into mindless automatons. The only person who's ever worked with him and managed to sound like themselves is Flo Rida, and that's only because he had no personality to lose in the first place. I don't even dislike any of these songs, because that would imply that they get a reaction out of me. Which brings us to his latest. Now, trying to do analysis of a David Guetta song is like trying to do an artistic critique of a printer test page, but this is the job I chose, so today, let's look at his most recent hit, Personal Strength Song Number 25455B known by us humans as Titanium, and featuring some chick named Sia. Now, for the last few weeks, I've been hearing this song, and I think in all honesty, it might be one of Geta's best- Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Did I hear someone say something about Sia? Oh, uh, hi, Pa. Um, yeah, Sia, that's the name of the person I'm reading here. Why, have you heard of her? Uh, yeah. Why have you not heard of her? I mean, like, I only really listen to, like, top 40 radio. It's the only station I get in my car. Although I am saving up getting one of those iPod things I keep well, hearing about. <laughs> well, it seems your little pop song review show has to be taken over by someone who knows something about real music. Listen close. I lie away. I've gone to ground. So, Sia was discovered by the public, well, the cool public, back in 2001 for her vocal work with down-tempo group Zero Seven, most notably her amazing performance with Sophie Baker on the song Destiny. From there, Sia became indie pop's new darling girl with her big solo albums which gradually got bigger and bigger to the point of being sold in Starbucks and which led her away from the smooth jazzy sounds to more boisterous dance tunes. Her latest album, while still pretty good on its own merits, is evident of her evolution, for lack of a better term. Still, hipster dream girl. And there you have it. Let's hope now you know something a little bit more about real good music than you did just a moment ago. Wow, thanks for that, Pa. Well, here's how I know her. you do this to me? That came out this year, man. Don't you just love that hilarious over-singing? It's like she's making fun of him. 
Hey, I heard you were a wild one. Ooh. <laughs> and now she's making shitty dance music with European DJs. Isn't that great? But, but, I have all her CDs. I'm gonna have to burn them now. Don't relax, this song isn't that bad. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's horrible. Hey, you wanted to be on Todd's show about silly pop songs, so this is what you get. Besides, I think Imogen Heap has proven that even if you maintain your artistic integrity, they'll just sample you and drag you into the pop world anyway. So really, if you can't beat them, join them. And besides, what's so bad about this? I like Sia's voice. She actually manages to retain some of her humanity. And then of course she's overcome by Getatron 3000, but at least she's there for a little while, right? Why would she want to get involved in this? Why would she, why would she want to perform this terrible... Awful song. Um, probably because she wrote it. This is wrong. This is all wrong. This is all wrong. And whatever, Paul, you just don't get it. This is great. Okay, it's not at all, but it's better than it could be. And since we have a video with a plot, I guess I should mention that first. Basically, it's someone's half-assed X-Men rip-off suit and film with this kid manifesting superpowers at the beginning and then having to run from the government. Because, after all, what image best fits a song about inner strength and resilience than a child running for his life? I guess it wouldn't be bad as a short film, but as a music video it screams, I didn't want to make a music video. It doesn't work with the song at all, the editing doesn't match it, and the message I got from him is that Sia would prefer not to be associated with it. And then he explodes and they all die. I know this video is trying to get me to sympathize with the kid, but honestly, he seems like a real menace and probably needs to be put down like a dog. Yeah, I don't buy it. Still better than X-Men 3, though. Now, the song Titanium is an anthem of personal strength about fearlessly withstanding blows from your enemies. You are strong, like titanium. In Geta's case, he may be literally made of titanium, but let's ignore that. From what I can tell, Sia writes lyrics more based around mood than details and situations, so we don't have much to work with here. But we do get a little. So he's talking loud and she can't hear a word, and she's talking loud, not saying much. So basically what's going on is this. You suck, you suck, I hate you, la, and you are completely terrible. Why don't you go you, la, die, la, you utter waste la, of human la, garbage. You deserve to be punched la, la, in the face la, la, until you la, bleed. La, la, I hope you eat a bad hamburger and catch I'm a horrible disease. Go you, screw la, yourself, la, la. you suck. Unfortunately, talking loud and not saying much is a perfect description of this song too, because what Geta does best is loudness. See, it's a slow build. Sia slowly building up strength and energy, then right when she reaches maximum power, Destroyed by Geta's music. And yes, Geta is the genetically engineered shark in this metaphor. It's just hard to buy the sentiment of toughness when she's overpowered so thoroughly by her own music. That'd be less of a problem if David Geta was an interesting producer, but he's not. It's just her basic standard house music, and is it just me or do the beats seem like out of sync with each other? What do you call ns ns music when it's played backwards? Smith, Smith. Now I don't like get its production work ever, but let me tell you my real problem with this song. Let's think about that metaphor, titanium. I am titanium. Being made of titanium means being impervious. You don't corrode, you don't break down. Come down with you. Yeah, whatever, Obi-Wan. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. I'm nothing to do. You're not only getting back up after being knocked down Chumbawamba style, but you're actually feeling nothing and reacting to nothing. It's a variation of the old, I am rubber, you are glue defense. It's, it's not really any more sophisticated than sticks and stones may break my bones. Sticks and stones may break my bones. You know, it couldn't hurt to try a little harder, guys. But anyway, my real problem with this. Here's the message of the song. Your barrage of words won't hurt me. I feel no pain. Bullets just bounce off me. Like Superman. 
Well, you know what? Superman is lame. Batman is cool. I'd rather be someone who can't take a bullet and still kicks ass. I think I actually prefer Katy Perry's deeply condescending firework to this. She at least understands that people have feelings and stuff. But on the other hand, Titanium is probably better than a song where David Guetta tries to relate to our human emotions. It's probably for the best Sia chose this for her Guetta collaboration. I mean, it's gotta be better than any of our other songs would fit. Hmm. Nope, doesn't work. Besides, maybe in these deeply troubled times, an anthem about personal strength is what we need. About standing strong, about not backing down, about... Actually, maybe what we need in these troubled times is for this song to not be played for a while. Just a thought. It's a frustrating song. I like the build-up way more than the payoff. I guess you could call it a slow burn if you mean burning in the sense of an unpleasant rash. I'm not even sure I would call this song flawed. It's just not being played in the right place. It belongs on a dance floor. Now, if I was listening to this on a dance floor, I wouldn't check, but I don't go out clubbing and I still hear it. It's, it's like listening to Christmas music in March. It doesn't fit. David Guetta's music should be inside clubs, like a quarantine so that it doesn't infect the rest of the world. Yeah, I'm a little divided on this song. I guess my verdict on this depends on whether I think of it as a Sia song being dragged down by David Guetta, or another boring David Guetta song being delivered by working with a decent artist. What do you think, Paul? The Sia I know is dead. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I think this was a great idea. I hope it starts a trend, even. Vice can start having guest verses from Pitbull. Regina Spector can start shooting whipped cream from her boobs. Bjork can join the Black Eyed Peas. You know what, the more I think about it, the more I like it. David Guetta is leading us into our bland, boring robot future. I approve. The Sia I know is dead. DEAD! Not in a threatening way, just emotionally. Dead. <laughs>